A customer just dropped this off. It's a five horsepower uh, leaf blower, which is made by Yard Machines. Uh, the customer said that you couldn't get it started, and I think it was leaking fuel or something, and it was maybe she had run it without oil, I believe. So just to test, let's see if this motor is seized. Ugh. That's definitely seized pretty bad. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and to start, let's unseize this engine. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that now. The first thing you want to do is take out all the oil, or if there's any oil remaining. Wow, it looks like there was no oil in this engine, meaning that the engine could be seized so bad that it uh, could thro throw a rod, um, could break a rod. Uh, so there's really no telling whether this fix uh, will fix it or not, but we'll go ahead and try it anyway. The next thing you want to do once you've removed all the oil is take out the spark plug. I'm going to remove this exhaust cover to make it easier to access the spark plug. So if you look at the spark plug you can actually see that it's broken like so. So I'm going to have to buy a new spark plug to replace that. So to unseize the engine we're going to be using this which is PB Blaster. It's really cheap. Uh, you can buy one off Amazon for just three bucks. All you need to do is spray your PB Blaster into this spark plug hole towards the cylinder. Spray a lot because uh, it won't hurt the engine. So I might actually need a tube so I can reach into the hole there. So let me go grab one. Turns out that I didn't have an extra tube, so I'm just going to have to try to have good aim. Let's see if I can get it in here. All right, now we're gonna let this sit for an hour and a half. Here's the replacement spark plug. Just so you know, the gap on almost all spark plugs going into a Briggs & Stratton engine should be 0 .03. Now that the engine sat for about uh, three hours, I'm gonna go see if it's still seized up. So I'll pull the cord. And as you saw earlier, I could, couldn't even pull it. Far improved. Let's see if it starts. Put the choke on, put the RPMs to full, spark plug in, here we go. Come on buddy. I unseized the engine but it still wouldn't start. That means it's most likely a carburetor issue as well. So, I removed the carburetor, which all you need to do to do that is remove the air filter and the air filter holder, and then you just can unscrew a couple of bolts and the carburetor just comes right out. So let me show you a few issues with this carburetor. So the first and most easy to notice uh, issue with this carburetor is this little part right in here. Now this is the handle for the choke. This is choke and then this is run. As you can see, this thing in here is actually bent out of shape as is the plastic holding it down like that. So that's obviously going to cause an issue. Another issue is the gasket on this side is completely broken. And the final issue is if you look on the bottom, the bolt to unscrew the bowl from the carburetor uh, has been completely wrecked. Um, I think somebody tried to get in here but they couldn't. So now this bolt is totally stripped and it has a little sliver through the middle of it uh, as well the bowl is pretty dented around here so unfortunately the fact that this is bent this is completely stripped and almost impossible to get out and this gasket will need replacing it's not worth it to try to fix this carburetor it would actually be cheaper just to buy a new one uh, a new aftermarket one also I tried for about half an hour to get this bolt undone and I couldn't do it so I don't think I could even fix this uh, carburetor without getting under the bowl so that I can clean the jets underneath. I think I actually may have used uh, my last carburetor on the last lawnmower that was in the shop so we'll have to see if I still have any or not. Alright moment of truth let's see. Oh yeah we still have one left that's good. Alright let's open this baby up. 
Here's the gaskets. And here's the carburetor. See how it looks. There it is. Alright, we're reinstalling the carburetor now. So, there's this little piece here that acts as the O-ring. And then, just fit it here. And screw these bolts in. Cut back to you when I'm done with that. Now I'm going to hook up the linkages, which I should have done before I screwed everything in. Ah, man. Alright, I got all the linkages attached, but I had to take the whole carburetor off to do it. And then I had to drill a hole through this little butterfly clip right here. Because in this uh, carburetor, there's two holes on the butterfly clip. One for the spring, and then one for the linkage. And there was only one for the linkage on this new carburetor, so I had to drill another hole through that. But, now it's hooked up there, so let's move on to the next part. Next we need to install the air filter holder again. Alright, so we've got the air uh, filter holder on and we got the fuel line in. Let's put on the air filter in the air breather box. Alright, we'll see if it starts. As you can see, I'm using this little stick as a choke. We'll see if that works. wire to turn it off but success well guys as you can see I'm leaking a bunch of fuel down here because the fuel line fell off unfortunately uh, and it's too hot for me to go in there and try to plug it up right now all right the fuel lines reattached let's do a little bit of testing with this I want to make sure it runs well Alright, apart from not shutting off, it seems to be doing a great job. Everything, it's not even pulsing. I'm really impressed with the new carburetor. Yeah, it seems to be working pretty much perfectly. So, please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you next time.